Hey everybody, so in today's video I wanted to talk about the param function and how it can pass information from one app to the next, which can be pretty useful. And as always, I'm going to throw in a little bit of tips or information to help you guys out a little bit. So it should be a quick video. Stay tuned. So I wanted to start out with uh, my little example I made. I'm not finished with it yet, but basically this is a power app that's embedded in a modern SharePoint page. And all I have is this little app on here. And I have a, a projects list that I'm looking at. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my different projects from here. So I'll do this one. And it's gonna open up another app. So right now it's opening up another app and pass information from it to this one and it's downloading some information. It's going to bring in the title of my project, some documents about my project, some information. Again, this is just testing, so that's going to be all me. <laughs> um, I have some different workflows I can do. Click that back up. I can add another document and that's about it. So if I exit out of this app and I go over to my other project, it's going to open up the same exact app and all of a sudden this information looks really similar but you can tell that the title's different. It's got a different document in there. Uh, I've got my dad in there and these are the same but uh, it's pretty handy. It can come in handy for lots of different things. This is just a uh, thought that I had that I try out. Um, so I'm going to be going over how to do this. I won't make it because it takes kind of a long time to make it, but I'll show you guys how I did it. So if we go over to the designer on my first app that's in the home page, I have just a few labels on here and I have this gallery and the gallery the items property in my gallery is just my test projects list. Um, that's looking at SharePoint and in there I just have two projects so my item I just have a label I have this little separator nothing fancy um, but the key to this is the param function so this actually there's two ways of doing this so I'm going to show you guys two different ways. So we're going to use a function that's called launch. So the launch is going to launch a new web page and it's going to type or do whatever I put in here and this is kind of a way to use the param function without using the parameter function but basically this is launching my um, my power app URL and it's got my app ID in here I think it starts oops. It starts by right here, and there's my app ID. Or no, there it is right there. Got my app ID, I believe. Don't quote me on that. Um, and then I have my parameter name. So that's kind of a really crazy way of doing it. A lot simpler way of doing it. That you guys probably would rather know is this way. So right here, I could use this same function. So on the on select property on my gallery, I'm going to say launch, and this will always be the same, https colon forward slash web dot power apps dot com apps, and then right here you're going to type in your app ID, and I'll show you how to get there, how to get your app ID um, if you haven't known how to do that, but basically you go to your web dot powerapps.com oh, and you can go to your app that you want and it's going to load for a second but this is my test project app so I'm going to go here in the home tab I'm going to go over to the ellipses the details and there is my app ID you could also make this a lot simpler and just put in this web link and that gets it out to you. So 
going back to here, uh, you're going to launch. There it is. You're going to launch that, put in your app ID. The next thing you can put, you could just leave it here, and just this right here uh, would get you your, you know, you'd launch your app. But if you want to do a parameter, you're going to type in your parameter's name and the value you want to pass. So the parameter's name is what you're going to use when on my other app, I'm going to look for whatever I typed in here. And when it launches this URL in here, it's going to add on, it's going to do an ampersand and my parameter name. And then equals, and then I'm passing in my project number of whatever project I selected. So if you go in here, I could do it this way instead of parameter name, I could do my project number. And then here I could do this item dot whatever and you choose whatever you want. Um, so I could do it that way. But I chose I was testing a few things out and I tried to just type in the whole URL and so uh, to do that. But the other way, a lot simpler. So I'll put that link down below so you guys can copy it or like I said, you can go to your details page and get the web link. That's a little easier. But so this app's really simple. Uh, in my other app, so once I click this, it opens up this app. And first off, to get that information, um, that's when the param function comes in. So I'm going to go to my app on the left side, and I'm going to look at my on start. And first off, I have I set my var number uh, variable. So I'm just setting the variable, calling it var number, and saying param, and then project number. And notice how that is the same as this in my other app. It's saying project number, project number. So it's getting that parameter from the URL, actually, which is pretty cool. And I've tried to put that, tried to embed this app in another SharePoint page and was testing to see if I could just get add the ampersand project number equals whatever to my SharePoint page and that doesn't exactly work. I don't know if there there is a way to do that so if there is a comment let me know. That would be cool. But it's kind of nice to just have it bring its own, open up its own web page and it fills out the whole page. So that's really cool too. Uh, the next thing I'm doing right here is I'm doing creating a collection. I'm calling it collection projects. Um, spell a little weird. And then I'm going to filter my test projects list where the number is the same as my parameter number. So when I click here, it's going to give me my this project's number sent in the parameter. When I come here, it's going to filter the projects by the number that is in uh, is in there. So that now I can reference my project. Before I just had the project number from the parameter, now I can filter my projects list based on the number that it passed me. So uh, you can do that with you know anything. Um, this was just my example, like I said, but I can see a lot of different scenarios where this could be really useful. Um, so I'm going to use that everywhere. So my collection is called collection projects, and I have to use the first function because I just want it to, it's always going to just be one unless I for some reason have two projects with the same number, but I'm just going to use that first um, function to get the first one in there. And I'm going to have to use that for the rest of the time. So, uh, for example, with my title label, I'm going to use the first function. So it's getting the first item, it's the only one, but for it to understand, it needs to kind of look at it, look at the collection as it's as if it's like an item. So it's gonna it's gonna say first collection project dot title, and I can do you know any information I want from my project from that item. Um, I can get the person, I can get whatever I want to. So I got the title using the same thing description. Um, over here I have a library 
and this is actually a looks a little complicated but I have a video on how this works so when I let's see it's I'm not gonna work too well but hit play and I click these right now nothing selected I click these I can click all three of them I can click just two of them or just one I'm glad of that so that's a special uh, little function I learned how to do um, on there which is pretty cool oh it's kind of Take out a little bit, but all that is. Um, but I'm gonna put a link to that on how to do that, and it's one of my other videos, so I'll put a link to that on there somewhere. So you can click on it. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and I'm just filtering, but you could just filter this whole gallery on if on that project number and the documents have a field that's project number, and you can filtered on there which is what I did essentially but I just was filtering it on the type as well um, but when, I, when I'm in there let me show you this let me go back here click on this guy and I have this guy right here and when I click this icon it's just going to launch the link to that document I'm going to click on that, launch a new web page, a document, whatever it is. Get out of that. Um, so that's pretty simple. Right here. So all I did on this icon was launch. Use that launch function again. This item dot link type. That's pretty awesome. Um, another thing I did was this form, which is pretty cool. So the form, the data source, is always going to be your list that you're looking at or whatever it is and the item that is in there is going to be the first in my collection projects uh, collection so just getting whatever you know I got from my parameter function that got filtered down and it's the first item in there it's the project that I selected from the other app so it's going to bring in all the different information in there um, like you can see in this one it's got just this is just a person these are all people fields I added these images to be whoever is in this field is going to be that person there's a mail button if you're on your iPad or something you can click that and it'll send an email to them or open up an email so you can send to them and if I look at that there we go I've got a lot of tabs up uh, you can't really see them it's not very good but look in there one of this you got this little image. And the image is set to this item dot project manager dot picture. So pretty easy. And this little guy right here, man, it's hard to click on. There it goes. Um, so the on select property of this mail icon is going to be using that again. I should probably call this the launch function. I'm using a lot more than the other one, but um, the launch function. If you do mail to colon uh, and that label is just looking at the email and um, in this in there it's just looking at this email label and that if you're on the app it'll launch that open you can also set that to uh, any other URL the email that you want to send it to or whatever you'd like um, Let's see what else I have here. So the last thing I have is the start workflow. And this thing is pretty cool. It's actually just a checkbox. And the checkbox is hidden. I make the checkbox size equal to zero. If I set it to like 20, it's probably going to look weird. But yeah, there's a little checkbox. All I did was set it to zero. Make it disappear. So this whole thing is just a checkbox. Those little icons are right here, and I do not name mine. I really should. Um, and the rotation is if the checkbox is equal to true, it's 180. If it's not, it's zero. So that's just flipping it back and forth. When I click on it, it'll switch back up and down like that. So it's rotating. And here I just have, I believe I just have a little gallery. So I have a little gallery, and again the height is just set to 
if it's true, it's 121. If it's not, zero. Um, so that's it. It's pretty simple, but it's a pretty cool little thing. You can add whatever items you want in there. I just used a collection, so if I go back here, bring this up. So this looks a little scary. This is for my um, my filter down for the documents down there. So again, you'll see something like that in my other video if you want to look at that. It's not super long. Um, probably a lot shorter than this one. But what I did for that little those workflow items is I did title and something cool that you can do is I said that I put a navigation field in there and I actually set it to one of the screens in my app. So I haven't done a whole lot on this, but on this app I'm going to add in those different screens. But I've added in an RFI screen and a doc approval screen. And once you add, you have to add the screens first and then it'll kind of recognize them. But that's a pretty cool thing that you can do. So on my app I have an RFI screen, doc, appro or, yeah, doc approval screen. So I'm in here. Based on the item I select, it's going to take me to the screen of that item. So that's another thing that you guys can do. I click on this. It's not showing me anything because I haven't set this up yet. But it took me to that screen. It's probably easier to show you on here. Um, doc approval. I'm do that. So now I'm in my doc approval screen. Click here. Press for information. Now I'm in my RFI screen. So there you have it. It's a cool little way of using the parameter function. Um, works pretty easily and you can make it look pretty good. Uh, it kind of looks almost in, like part of the page as normal. So, uh, so there you guys go. If you have any questions or comments or you want me to explain something further or talk about anything.